gentlemen, my name is Dave Gorman, and as the title suggests, I am of the opinion that modern life is indeed good-ish. It's pretty good, but it could be better. So I've been putting together some stuff which I think proves my point. It's all right here on my laptop. I've got the remote control in my hand, and I'd like to talk you through it tonight. And tonight, I want to talk to you about the big things, about the important things. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about Anne Diamond. <laughs> I want to talk to you about what is wrong with Anne Diamond. <laughs> I'll tell you what is wrong with Anne Diamond. What is wrong with Anne Diamond is that it is grammatically incorrect. <laughs> clearly, clearly, that should be a diamond, shouldn't it? Clearly, clearly. You've only got to use it in a sentence to make that obvious to yourselves. In a sentence, you might say, for example, uh, a diamond would look nice there. You would never say, would you? You'd never say, Anne Diamond would look nice there. <laughs> That would be weird. You might say, for example, uh, a diamond has fallen out of my earring. You might say that. But you would never say, you would never say, and diamond has fallen out of my earring. You might say, for example, you might say, a diamond is dripping in the blood of a thousand African miners. <laughs> you would never say, you would never say, and diamond is dripping. <laughs> In the blood of a thousand miners. That would be wrong in so many ways. No, you would never, never say that. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'd like to talk also about what is wrong with Anne Summers. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you what is wrong with Anne Summers later. I'll tell you what is wrong with Anne Summers. It is the overpriced vibrators. That's what's wrong with Anne Summers. <laughs> £40 for a vibrator? What are they thinking? <laughs> While I'm here, incidentally, I would have used a different phrase myself. I'm not sure that's... <laughs> that's not right, is it? Surely. And no, I don't think I will. No. No. Who is doing that? Who is posting that to Facebook? Makes no sense whatsoever, does it? Who is shopping here and thinking, yeah, I'll tell all my friends I'm buying one of those. <laughs> you can, incidentally, uh, unsurprisingly, write the first review. Yeah. <laughs> nobody has yet reviewed the Jimmy Jane form, six pink, on, uh, on Amazon. You can, nobody's even reviewed it on Amazon. And people review everything on Amazon. Look at that, nobody. And incidentally, well done, Amazon. That is much better, much, much better. Well done. <laughs> well done. I, I was genuinely shocked when I discovered these were on sale in Amazon. I, I've always thought of Amazon as a place to, you know, I knew you could buy books and CDs and the like, and I sort of become vaguely aware you could buy a chopping board or a mortar and pestle or some other kind of homewares and so on, but I had no idea that they sold this. They sell an amazing range of things. They sell everything, basically. Recently, I was looking for a book. I have a Kindle. I was looking for an e-book. I was looking for Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky, okay? I know, that's the kind of guy you're looking at, right? <laughs> and I was scrolling through the various editions. There are different translations different editions of the book. I was looking for the one that I thought was best suited to me. And I was quite surprised as I did so to discover this, ladies and gentlemen, not very far down the list. <laughs> Crime and Punishment, Collection 1. Five erotic stories of sexual submission by V.R. Dunlap. And once you've found something like that, once you've lifted the lid and peered inside, it's amazing how cavernous that part of the internet can be. I, I clicked on this. I wasn't looking to buy it. I was just curious. <laughs> and look at this. The customers who bought this item also bought list. It's huge. It goes on forever. You get things like this. Using her while she sleeps. <laughs> I'm sorry. Using her while she sleeps is not a very nice thing to do. Please don't use anyone while they sleep. Forced sex? What kind of euphemism is forced sex? This isn't very... 77p to read about forced sex in an e-book. I'll never trust anyone with a Kindle on the tube again now. I'm going <laughs> to look at them all with suspicion in my heart. I don't like it. What was weird about reading all of these... Not the books, the, you know, the... <laughs> You know what I mean. What was weird, what's weird when you see all these are here, is you see people are reviewing them as well. If you're in the supermarket and somebody else is looking over your shoulder into your trolley, you feel a little bit like they're invading your space. This is private. Online, you just go and share with the world everything you've bought by leaving reviews. You leave a big old ugly footprint all over the internet. This is an example of one of them, right? This is a book. Uh, this book is called Tied to the Desk and Shared. <laughs> 
Now, a positive review would make some sense to me. If this is a genre of literature that you enjoy, then yes, you might want to tell other people that you enjoyed this particular example. But this particular book has one review, and it's a one-star review. <laughs> Now, this it perplexes me. I'll give you the full flavour of the book. I don't want anyone to think, well, you could have bought it by accident. You could have bought it without knowing what you were really getting. Here is the full description. Mistakes happen. But when Annabelle makes one that will rebound financially on the firm she works for, she has to be punished. Well, that's, that's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. I've, every company needs to have some kind of disciplinary procedure in the workplace. That's normal, isn't it? That's fine. Her boss, Brad, has a reputation for punishing his female staff. And Annabelle can't wait. <laughs> but her mistake is such a biggie that she is not only spanked, but tied to Brad's desk and shared with other members of the board who pleasure themselves fully, fully, not partially, fully, <laughs> fully on her helpless body. This is his one-star review. A person, I've, I've taken the name of the reviewer away. I don't wish to embarrass them. I don't wish any ill upon them. Wish I had never bothered. Poor writing, poor story. In fact, everything about it is poor would not recommend this book to anyone. If that was me, I'd be thinking, I regret that. I'm telling no one. <laughs> He's effectively spent 66p to wear a badge saying, I bought a book about someone being forced to have sex while tied to a desk. That's a weird thing to do, isn't it? Why would you tell the world that you've bought that? And then I thought, maybe, maybe he's really into this genre of literature. Maybe this is the one he didn't like amongst all the others that he did. That, that would kind of make some sense. You can see all of his reviews. There's a little button you click, you can see everything else that he's reviewed. And as you can see, it's largely small electrical items. <laughs> nothing, nothing kinky. That's, that's not a, a cat of nine tails down there. That is just some cabling. That's all that is. There's nothing kinky about any of this. Nothing in this suggests he's that kind of type at all. I suppose, well, maybe. Depends on your point of view, that could be. <laughs> that could be, but let's assume it's not. This is, this is my favourite page of his reviews. You can see he's reviewed a wireless USB mouse, an 18-volt cordless drill, and a bottle of bird table disinfectant, right? <laughs> Nothing kinky there. Either that or something really bloody kinky there. Right? But basically, nothing, nothing going on, nothing suspicious. He's given them all five-star reviews. But this is my favourite part about this page. <laughs> he left all of these reviews, ladies and gentlemen, on Christmas Day. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not right, is it? I don't want to think about anyone leaving a review for bird table disinfectant on Christmas Day. This is a man who doesn't know that he is allowed to not review things. He gets an email that says, you bought this, what did you think? You think, oh, yeah, I better tell them, I'll go off and tell them. They're not the boss, you're the boss, it's your life, you're working for them, you're helping yourself, you don't have to go and tell them everything you think, help them out with their website, have a relax, have a sausage roll, it's Christmas. <laughs> this is weird, isn't it? Now, we, we have to go to a break uh, now, but before we do, just let me show you this one example. This is my favourite examples uh, of the oddness where the retail world meets the online world. I've moved house recently. I've been buying furniture. I was looking at this website, Furniture123. As you can see, they were selling a one-door wardrobe in white. The picture is missing from this page of the website, but I've done that. I've removed the picture myself, uh, and there's a reason. Something is odd with this picture. Have a little guess. When we come back, I'll tell you what's wrong with that. and this is Modern Life is Goodish. Now, the area of modern life we've been talking about so far is that interesting space where the retail world meets the online world. In particular, I was showing you this website, Furniture123, and their attempt to sell me a one-door wardrobe in white. I've removed the picture because something is wrong with that picture. Does anyone have a guess as to what could be wrong with that picture? Any guesses? Anyone at all? Wrong colour. So, wrong colour was the first one I heard? It's not even a wardrobe, says a man with a very... I beg your pardon? One door is broken off. These are all entertaining guesses. The correct answer is that it is actually half a picture of a two-door wardrobe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? <sighs> Should we make the one door? No, nah, we've got Photoshop. That'll do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
been talking about online retail, and I understand why. At a website where you go to buy something, you might want to leave a review. Like Amazon, for example. There, it's citizen journalism. You're helping other people to make informed purchasing choices. That makes sense. Even on Furniture123, it makes sense. But there are other websites that I have no idea why they exist. I don't know why anyone would go to them, and when they're there, I have no idea why they would leave a review. Why on this earth would anyone wish to visit finish.co.uk? <laughs> How much information could you want to know about dishwashing that you can't find elsewhere? Incidentally, though, they do have an Anne Diamond standard, so that's... <laughs> that's handy. Um... <laughs> They don't really I Photoshop that bit in. But they have a diamond standard. I added an Anne. That's all it was. But really, look, let's leave a review now. Why would you leave a review of dishwashing tablets at finish.co.uk? What possible advantage are you getting by telling them what you think of their dishwashing tablets on their website? It makes no sense whatsoever. But lots of people do. 3,930 reviews had been posted by the time I visited finish.co.uk. One of them comes from a girl called Claire, who's from Sunderland. She's aged between 35 and 44. She is female, has a small family and uses her dishwasher daily. And now this was on page one of 1,817 pages of reviews. That's weird, isn't it? Why are so many people doing this? And why would any of them wish to share it with Facebook or Twitter? This is her review. I really cannot believe the difference in this dishwasher tablet compared to other brands. I was amazed by the sparkle and smell. This product is brilliant and I would highly recommend it. Now that's fine, if that's what she thinks, that's what she thinks. Twelve people found those words helpful. <laughs> Weirder than that, five people found them unhelpful. <laughs> what were they trying to achieve that was hindered by reading those words? There's 12 people there, five people there, and Claire herself. That is 18 people who I think have got the time to do the dishes by hand. <laughs> That's an insane, isn't it? This is the full range. This is the full range of dishwasher tablets available from Finish. They have the top of the range, Quantum, the middle of the range, the all-in-one, and the bottom of the range is the Classic, okay? Now, the Quantum has eight power actions. The all-in-one has only six power actions, and the Classic, just two power actions. Now, already, I take issue with Finish on a linguistic technicality. Um, let's look at the two at the top of the range here, the Quantum and the all-in-one. Let's just compare them here. Uh, quantum, what does Quantum mean? Mean. Well, according to dictionary.com, quantum means either one, a quantity or amount, the least quantum of evidence, or two, a particular amount, or three, a share or portion, or four, a large quantity, bulk. Or, in the world of physics, it could mean something that I haven't got a clue <laughs> about. I think it's fair to summarise those various definitions as sum. <laughs> That's fair, isn't it? That's what it means. It means sum. A part of, a bit of. That's basically what it means. However, all, according to dictionary.com, I think we can summarise that one as meaning all. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it just me, or, or am, I, am I alone in thinking that all is necessarily bigger than some? <laughs> all has to be all of something. Some has to be some of something. They can't, what, that has to be bigger than that, doesn't it? So how come all has six power actions and some has eight power actions? That makes no sense whatsoever. But then you can't expect it to because the power actions don't really make up sense at all. This is the first two. The first two power actions as shared by all of the dishwashing tablets in the brand. Powerful clean and tea stain removal. Ladies and gentlemen, who amongst us has ever taken a mug out of the dishwasher and said, I'll tell you what, that is powerfully clean. <laughs> Mind you, it's tea stained to buggery. <laughs> you can't be tea stained and be powerfully clean, can you? They're not, they're mutually exclusive things. You can't have them both as power actions, can you? This Venn diagram has never existed before, has it? <laughs> it's not necessary, is it? No. And in the world where that Venn diagram exists, you can't be there, can you? It's not possible. You can't be powerfully clean but tea stained. I'm not having, they're not separate actions, are they? Next two, salt function and rinse aid function. And then the next two, machine lime scale protection and grease cutting. Grease cutting. Ladies and gentlemen, I refer you to my earlier comments. That Venn diagram has never existed. <laughs> Nothing 
thing's ever come out of a dishwasher powerfully clean but covered in grease and tea stains, has it? <laughs> you can't be there, it doesn't exist. You can't have all three as separate actions, surely. Next two, after that, wrapper free and amazing. Wrapper free? <laughs> well, since when did not having a wrapper become an action? <laughs> It's not an action. You don't actively not do something. You can't redefine the words action and power, can you? It's got to be active. That's what the word means. It's a clue, isn't it? There are, as far as I'm concerned, ladies and gentlemen, five power actions. I think we can all agree on that. Let's all write to the company and insist <laughs> that they reduce the number of power actions. Uh, incidentally, this, this is how they've been advertising them. You've probably seen this. Millions of Finnish quantums are being tried across the land, and you are raving about their sparkling clean, giving them 4.8 stars out of 5. Yeah, all those reviews have added up, haven't they? They've done very well. 4.8 stars out of 5, yeah? Here they are on the website. 4.8 stars out of 5. Which is interesting. Interesting to me. There they are. I can see the first four stars. That must be the four. And then that last one, which isn't complete, that, that must, I, mean, I must be right here, that must represent the point 0.8 of a star, mustn't it? That, that there must represent 0.8 of a star. Which is interesting to me because 0.8, I don't want to blind you with science here, 0.8 is another way of saying 8 out of 10. And 8 out of 10 is another way of saying 4 out of 5. And that... <laughs> is a five-pointed star. <laughs> but it's just not very hard, is it, to work out what a fifth of a five-pointed star is. It's easy, isn't it? You thought, that's it, there you go. Five equal parts, easily done. If you wanted to have four-fifths of a star, it would actually look like that, wouldn't it? That's not quite what they've done, is it? No, no. <laughs> not quite what they've done. Something quite different, as far as I can see. And my guess, and it is just a guess, is that what they've actually got there is roughly... <laughs> A fifth of a fifth there. What they've got there is 96% of a star. That is 0.96, not 0.8. And now you've got to question their judgment about everything, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, when they say that something is powerfully clean, how clean do they really think it is? They could be saying it's powerfully clean, thinking they're saying 96% clean. It might only be 80% clean. How do we know the difference anymore? They could mean anything. 4.8, weirdly, this is very weird, 4.8 out of 5 is actually 96%. So you could say that without those four stars, that one represents the full 4.8 out of 5. <laughs> and maybe that's what they meant all along. Maybe if you said, hang on, that's not 4.8 out of 5, they'd say, what, what, those four stars? No, no, they're always there. No, no. <laughs> no. They're not part of the measurement. No, no, they're not part of the scale. That's just decoration. No, no. At least, I'll give, I'll give finish this. That's what it should look like. That's what it should look like, absolutely. There's the 4.8 out of 5 stars. I'll give finish credit for something. Their 4.8 stars out of 5 is based on nearly 4,000 people reviewing it. And that says something. They've got a large sample. At least they've done that. Not every company bothers with such a large sample, do they? For example, Rimmel. This is a little snippet from a Rimmel makeup ad. An ultra even and natural finish. Undetectable and without a trace. 71% of 99 women agree. 99! They couldn't even be bothered to ask one more. <laughs> you're making a multinational advertising campaign and your survey doesn't meet the rigorous standards of family fortunes. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? You've got to ask more than 99 women, haven't you? And this isn't like an odd one out. They're all like this from Rimmel. This is another one. Save proof. Transfer proof for up to 25 hours. Yeah, transfer proof for up to 25 hours. Agreed by 73% of how many women? How many women do you think agreed to this being transfer proof for 25 hours? How, what, what do you reckon? 173. It's too many people at once. I'll go down here. 173. 173. 73% of 173. From over here? 52. Okay, we are getting closer. The correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, 34 <laughs> women. 73% of 34 women. 24.82 women, basically. <laughs> How did they find 34 women? Did they go to a women's rugby game, ask both the teams, the ref, the lines women, and a spectator? What did they do? You can't just stop at 34, can you? It's amazing. They do this all the time. This is another one. Sexy, voluptuous lips. Yeah, sexy, voluptuous lips. Now, 
Again, 34 women. Is it the same 34 women or a different 34 women? I have no idea. The question is, what percentage of those 34 women agreed that it gave them sexy, voluptuous lips? Find out when we come back. We won't be long. I'm Dave Gorman, this is Modern Life is Goodish, and tonight we've been looking at the things people do when they want to sell you something. Now, before the break, I showed you a little snippet of this ad. Sexy, voluptuous lips. And I asked you what percentage of 34 women agreed that it gave them sexy, voluptuous lips. Anyone would like to take a guess? There was a guess from over here earlier. 83. 83, says this man. 55, says somebody else. The correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, the correct answer, 47%. <laughs> Of 34, less than half of the women asked agree. More people disagree with the claim than agree with it, but we're still going to tell it you in our adverts. How on earth are they actually allowed to get away with that? I suppose they get away with it because they tell you that most people disagree. We'll do one more of these just for fun because they are fun. Oh, here we go. Last up to 12 hours. Perfect finish. Last up to 12 hours, perfect finish. It's quite difficult to read this one. It's going to be white writing on top of Kate Moss's hair, but the survey is amazing. 20 out of 99 women. <laughs> 20 out of 99, which I think I'm right in saying is just over 20%. 20 out of 99. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you could be forgiven, if you've been watching the show so far, for thinking I've become a little bit obsessed with Finnish dishwashing tablets. And you'd be right, I have. There is a reason, and the reason is this. They have become the subject of some small domestic dispute between me and Mrs Gorman. The thing is, my wife worships the Powerball. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I paused there because I was just imagining somebody changing channels and landing just at that moment. And... <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. I imagine they've already left if they did. No. <laughs> she worships the Powerball. At home, we use the all-in-one, the middle of the range. That's the one we use. I think it's a bit too expensive. For my tastes, I think we should be using something cheaper, but Mrs Gorman insists. And when I say, why can't we step down to something cheaper, she says, we have to have the Powerball. So that's the Powerball right there. I decided to do a bit of research into what exactly is in the Powerball. If it's so important to my wife, I want to know what's in it. Ladies and gentlemen, here, when you find out what I found out, it's going to blow your minds. Here <laughs> is the result of my experiment. That's me in my kitchen, getting out the dishwashing tablets. Now, I am concerned that some of you are going to look at that and you're going to think, oh, well, this is like camera trickery or something's gone on. So I have, live with me here, ladies and gentlemen, some actual all-in-one finished detergent tablets. And it's in a sealed box. I'm going to let somebody on the front row break the seal. You, sir, would you care to come forward? And can we make sure this camera gets to see it? We've only got the one box. We're very cheap. <laughs> OK, you've opened that box. OK, would you like to care to take out a Powerball? Would you like to take out another one uh, for a friend, if you like? <laughs> OK. You can take those. You can take those with you. Sit down. Give one to a, your friend. OK? Uh, now, hold on to those. Don't step ahead of the videos and do as I tell you, because you can... It can be dangerous if, if you... No, it's, it's amazing. This experiment is amazing. Watch this. That was a sight of a few hundred people thinking, mm, maybe rapper free is a power action after all. <laughs> I'm beginning to see their point of view. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it is. OK, I'm going to try and get the power ball out. You can open, open your two. Just open them very gently if you can. Don't, don't go any further than that. OK, what are your names, by the way, sir? Nick. Nick? Justin. Justin? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Nick. Nice to meet you, Justin. OK, here I am getting the power ball out. You don't need a knife. It's a bit like the opening scene of Casualty for a moment there, isn't it? <laughs> you can feel the tension in the room. All my fingers are still here. We can relax. Don't worry, people. Don't worry. I get the Powerball out. <laughs> Nick, Justin, just see if you can leave yours out. You won't need a knife. Just see if you can actually get them out with your hands. I heard a couple of people mumbling, you're already ahead of me. <laughs> this is a discovery that is going to blow your minds.
a fucking smarty. <laughs> the finished dishwashing Powerball is a smarty, ladies and gentlemen. Can I have your smarty? Can I have yours? Can you get yours out? Nick has got his out. Now, Nick, I'm going to just show this to this camera. This is a smarty. You shouldn't eat these because they've been <laughs> touching detergent and it's highly poisonous, OK? The detergent actually is, so you shouldn't... It is an irritant. I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat anything that has touched one of those. I wouldn't eat anything that's touched a plate that's touched one of those. I wouldn't. I, I really wouldn't. But look, I'm just going to... This is the smarty that I got from Nick. You witnessed that. I haven't yeah. left my hand. That is a smarty. <laughs> the Finnish Powerball is a smarty. Why the hell have we been letting them put smarties where the Powerball should be? How many people have been washing their dishes with smarties? <laughs> Maybe only smarties have the answer. I don't know. <laughs> but the Finnish Powerball is a smarty. The Finnish Powerball is a smarty. Now, I've got something very important to tell you, and that is that I lied. <laughs> the Powerball is not really a smarty, it's a real thing. It's actually part of a, a, an all-in-one dishwashing tablet. I skillfully cut open the packets with a scalpel, took out the Powerballs, replaced them with Smarties, and then very skillfully glued the packets up so that no one could tell and also know how to rig a box so that you can make it look like a sealed box and hide more inside. That, I'm sorry, I lied to you. But I think the important thing is that some of you believed me. <laughs> what the hell does that say about modern life that hundreds of people are prepared to believe that a multinational company would use chocolate <laughs> instead of detergent in a dishwashing tablet? How have we come to this? I'll tell you why I think some of you believe me. I think some of you believe me because, like me, you look at the box where it's claiming the all-in-one has five out of eight power actions, and you read it, you think they're not real power actions, and so you distrust them a little bit. I think some of you believed it because, like me, you've seen their adverts on TV where they're giving their own dishwashing tablets 4.8 stars out of five, and you've seen the graphing and thought, that's not quite right, and so you distrust them. But I think, and I think this is more likely, I think some of us believed it because we live in a world in which no no one trusts big business anymore. In a world where horse meat is in a beef lasagna, why wouldn't a smarty be in a dishwashing tablet? <laughs> it actually makes sense against that backdrop, doesn't it? We well, could say anything you want about big business these days. If I said to you, oh, do you know what's in Mr Sheen? Portuguese breast milk. <laughs> You, you say that on the internet, people will be retweeting it and sharing it and spreading it. If you said, oh, Jake, do you know what they make AstroTurf out of? Real grass. <laughs> People will believe anything. It's, I loved, I loved the horse meat scandal. It was amazing. Partly I loved it because I don't eat meat. <laughs> so, so I was safe. But also, I really enjoyed it because it became a national conversation. It was the one topic that everyone in Britain was talking about, just for a week or so. It was in every paper. The Telegraph were reporting it on the front page. So were the Times. So was the Daily Mail. So was the Guardian. So was the Mirror. Every single paper was doing it. It was all over the TV news. The experts say the discovery of horse meat masquerading as beef in some Findus lasagnas poses no immediate human health risk. On the 16th of January, 10 million burgers were taken off the shelves after traces of horse meat were found. For all we know, it could be for the last three, four, five years. How long has it been going undetected? Tests showed horse meat levels of between 60 and 100% in some products. Give me a feel, just a y your gut feel for how big this actually is. Okay. I'll tell you how big it actually is. It's big enough for everyone in the world to have been talking about it, for everyone to have been expressing an opinion about it, which is lovely for me because I have a little hobby. My hobby is scouring the internet looking for eccentricity and pomposity. I find the comments that people leave behind and I collect them and I collate them. And I turn them into something that I think is beautiful. That's what I've done with the horse meat scandal. I've taken real comments from real people and I've turned them into a thing I like to call a found poem, which I would like to perform for you now. I am getting increasingly fed up with the news media constantly referring to horse meat. Horses are not made of meat. If they were, there wouldn't be a scandal, because it would all be meat. But they aren't made of meat, they are horses not cows. <laughs> That's why this is also very, very wrong. I understand that people generally do not want to eat cats and or dogs. 
<laughs> because cats and or dogs are often pets. But for most people, horses are not pets. If rich people, who are the ones that own horses, <laughs> want to not eat them, then I'll understand. <laughs> but if you've never owned a horse, what's it got to do with you? <laughs> There is no way on earth this has just happened. <laughs> this was planned. The authorities are behind it. How do I know? Last week, one of the contestants on an episode of Come Dine With Me said they were so hungry they could eat a horse. The episode was filmed many months ago, long before this so-called news broke. Why would the programme makers leave in such a strange statement unless they knew this was going to happen. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Horses helped Great Britain win wars. Cows did not. <laughs> Horses helped Great Britain win Olympic gold medals. Cows did not. <laughs> and this is how we repay them. <laughs> Shame on us. Shame on all of us. Cows and horses are the same thing. <laughs> they both evolved from dinosaurs. <laughs> so really, it is all beef. <laughs> Dino beef. <laughs> the real scandal is yet to break. It is a well-known fact that cow beef comes from cows and not bulls. Hence the phrase, cow beef. <laughs> Will horse meat turn out to be stallion and not mare? That will be the nightmare. <laughs> Male animals contain spermatozoa, which nobody wants to eat. <laughs> Female animals contain eggs. I like eggs. <laughs> I like eggs. I like eggs. I like eggs. I thank you. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to Modern Life is Goodish. My name is Dave Gorman, and earlier on, I told you a lie. I told you that the Powerball in a finished dishwashing tablet was actually a Smarty. Now, I immediately confess that it isn't true, but I need to explain to you why I first started swapping Powerballs and Smarties. Uh, now, you can tell the difference between the two if they're side by side, even though that isn't a very good photo. You can probably see that the Powerball is actually different to the Smarty. Uh, we use the all-in-one at home. Uh, here I am. That's, that's a box that we have at home. That is our box of dishwashing tablets. As you can see, it contains 52 tablets. Now, I think they're a bit pricey. Mrs Gorman insists that we use them. That box costs us £14, ladies and gentlemen, uh, which for 52 means that it costs us 26.9 pence per wash. Now, my local supermarket have an own brand dishwashing tablet which costs just £1.60 for 30 which means that would cost us just 5.3 pence per wash. A saving, a huge saving, of 21.6 pence per wash. Now, like Claire from Sunderland, we use our dishwasher daily, so that is a saving of £1.51 a week. Now, Mrs Gorman insists that we cannot step down, and the reason we can't step down is because she worships the Powerball. We know that. So I wanted to demonstrate that the Powerball is not all it's cracked up to be. I had a simple ruse. I would remove all the Powerballs, replace them with Smarties, and then we would carry on as normal. No one would know the difference. And after a couple of weeks, I would simply say, by the way, how is the dishwasher performing these days, Mrs Gorman? And Mrs Gorman would say, it's doing very well, thank you. And I would say, aha, then I prove my point. Because for the last two weeks, you haven't washed a dish with a Powerball, you have washed your dishes with Smarties. And then, having proved that the Powerball wasn't all it's cracked up to be, we will be able to step down to a cheaper brand. That's all it was. A simple ruse to mislead the woman I love most on this earth. <laughs> That's all it was. 
And I can feel, some of you are thinking that's a bit far-fetched, that would never work. I wouldn't fall for that if I was actually trying to wash my dishes in them. I would see what they were when I opened them. But you do not know Mrs Gorman. <laughs> now, I really, I love this one with all my heart, but when she is relaxed, her brain can relax a little bit too. I mean, you don't know Mrs Gorman, I'll tell you a little bit about us. There's me, and there's Mrs Gorman. And here are three conversations that happened in one train journey, Lena. One train journey. She said, what's that stuff you dip sheep in? <laughs> to which I replied, sheep dip. <laughs> About 15 minutes later, I looked out of the window of the moving train and I said the following. I see the cows are lying down. And Mrs Gorman said, so? And I said... That means it's going to rain. And she said, no, that's when they're sitting down. <laughs> what is the difference between a cow sitting down and a cow lying down? I ask you that, ladies and gentlemen. Only half an hour later, I looked up from my newspaper and I said, I see Jeff Stellings left Countdown. To which she said, who's he? And I said, He's the guy that hosts Countdown. <laughs> to which she said, really? I thought it was that dead guy. <laughs> you get the idea. I love her dearly, but I think we can all accept that Mrs Gorman was the perfect target for the smarty Powerball ruse. Although while I'm on the topic, I want to share something with you, and I'm a bit nervous about saying this in public. I'm a bit nervous. I I've, got a, I've got a little feeling that my wife might be a little bit racist. I know, it's uncomfortable to, to say these things. We were out for dinner the other night. I don't eat meat, she does. When we go out for dinner, that's when she is most likely to indulge. She is more likely to have steak. Now, I was sitting across the table from her, and I looked down and I saw her steak, and I had to take a photograph of it. It looked, ladies and gentlemen, like that. Am I alone in thinking that she was subliminally carving her steak into a map of the British Isles? <laughs> Let me tell you, Cornwall was much bigger when I first said I want to take a photograph of it and I reached for my phone and she snipped off most of Cornwall. But look, if I told you that London was there and that Cardiff was there and Edinburgh was there and that Land's End was there and John O'Groats was there, I think we'd all agree we can see it. I mean, she wasn't trying. Subliminally, she was carving her stake to look like a map of the British Isles. And the reason, ladies and gentlemen, that I think she might be just a little bit racist... Potato. <laughs> What can you do? What can you do? The other reason was that all through dinner she'd blacked up. <laughs> Which is weird. Anyway, we know... <laughs> we know that my plan was to swap the Powerballs for Smarties. And that sounds like an easy thing to do, doesn't it? But where do you get 52 red Smarties? Where would you... Sir, if you had to get 52 red Smarties, how would you go about it, sir? Buy about 15 packets of Smarties. Buy about 15 packets of Smarties. Is that going to be too many Smarties or not enough Smarties? How, do you, how many Smarties in a pack? How many of them are likely to be red? I haven't thought about those things for at least five years. <laughs> it's difficult, isn't it? What I decided to do, I thought I'd buy five packs of Smarties, see what the averages were, and then step up the campaign from there, just to, <laughs> just to work it out properly. My first pack, ladies and gentlemen, contained two blue, two green, two purple, four orange, six red, seven yellow, and eight brown. Two blue in the first pack. My second tube contained eight blue, one green, four purple, three orange, only three red, eight yellow, and three brown. And also, two mauve, a colour that didn't even exist in the first tube. <laughs> this is not an easy thing to work out how many you're meant to be buying, is it? In total, ladies and gentlemen, in my five tubes, there were 27 blue, 20 green, 16 purple, there were just 12 orange, there were a whole 25 red, quite good, 28 yellows, 20 brown, and a measly nine mauve, although I accept that in this view, they do look more pink. I, I accept that. Uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the distribution of colours in Smarties. 
it's based on my five tubes of smarties. Now, don't get excited. You haven't won a game of Trivial Pursuit. Don't worry. This is just the distribution of colours from smarties based on my research. And you might be thinking, I don't think five tubes of smarties is quite enough to draw any firm conclusions, Dave. But let me remind you, in my five tubes, there were an average of 32 smarties per tube. So I've asked more smarties about their colour than Rimmel have asked women about their lipstick. <laughs> That is serious research right there, ladies and gentlemen. So I discovered... I discovered that in five tubes there were 25 reds. I thought, OK, if I bought 10 tubes, it stands to reason that I'd end up with 50 reds. So I bought 11 tubes because I wanted 52 red Smarties. I bought 11 tubes. It worked, ladies and gentlemen. In my 11 tubes, there were 349 Smarties and 54 of them were reds. I got my target with minimum wastage. That's the target here, obviously. Now, of course, what that did mean also is that I had 297 Smarties that I didn't really want. And what do you do with 297 Smarties that you don't want? It's very difficult to get rid of them. You can't just put them in a bowl and leave them around the house as a sweet, can you? Because they stand out. Look, that there is a dish <laughs> with hundreds of Smarties, including red ones. But that there is a dish without the red ones. <laughs> It's not the same photo with red eye correction on. It's not. It's a different photo. That is a dish of Smarties without red ones. I think it looks odd. I don't know that you'd look at it and go, well, where are the red ones? But I think you'd look at it and go, that's not right. You know, it's like this. Look, that, that's a picture of Bruce Forsyth. And you know something's not right, don't you? You don't know what it is, but you know something's not right. It's because he hasn't got a moustache, isn't it? There you go. There he is without, and there he is with. You, you know something's wrong without quite being able to put a finger on what it is. It's the same with that. That is Brucey without a tash, isn't it? And that's Brucey with a tash. You can't leave 297 no red Smarties lying around in a bowl. What I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, is I had no choice but to eat 297 <laughs> Smarties. I ate my 297 Smarties, I used the scalpel and the glue to open the packets and replace all the power balls with the 52 red Smarties and put them back uh, in the day. And that really should have been a very successful plan. It was an expensive plan. We spent £14 on the dishwashing tablets in the first place. I spent £5.39 on Smarties and I spent, on glue and scalpel, £3.79. Meaning a total of £23.18 in my quest to save 21.6p <laughs> per day. If this plan is successful, it needs to stay successful for 108 days before it turns a profit. <laughs> and that should have been all well and good. There should have been nothing wrong with the plan. Unfortunately, I came a cropper. About seven or eight days into the plan, it was bedtime, and Mrs Gorman approached me and said, by the way, did you have some kind of pudding that I didn't know about yesterday? And I said, no because I hadn't touched a pudding in days, not since eating 297 Smarties. <laughs> Couldn't face any of them. I said, why? She went, well, it's just a bit weird. I found a sort of weird chocolatey residue building up in the filter in the dishwasher. I said, really? She went, yeah. So now we've had to upgrade to quantum, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> Hasn't worked at all, has it? the most expensive lie I've ever told my wife, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks ever so much for watching. I think we have proved once again that modern life is goodish. I've asked the front row and at least 74% of 19 people agree with me. I'll see you soon. Good night. <laughs>